Hello and welcome to the Kiwi capital, Wellington. Today, something different. We're travelling by ferry on the Inter-Islander, which links the North Island and South Island. It's meant to be one of the most spectacular ferry journeys in the world. So come along and we'll see what it's like. In this video, you'll see the boarding experience, Check out the onboard facilities, including food and drink options. Learn a little about New Zealand's worst maritime disaster. Cross a strait, considered one of the world's most dangerous. And take in the incredible views in the Marlborough Sounds. The standard ferry crossing between Wellington and Picton takes three and a half hours although it can take longer in bad weather. Thankfully, today's forecast looks pretty good. We'll start today's journey at Wellington Railway Station. If you're travelling by foot, there's a free shuttle bus that leaves the station 50 minutes before sailings. Here's a more complete look at today's schedule. The ferry terminal is a short distance away but the company recommends against walking because you need to cross a busy highway. There are four inter-islander ferries, although one only carries freight. Today we're travelling on the Kayarahi. The Kayarahi can carry up to 520 passengers. In addition to the inter-islander, there's also a private ferry operator, Bluebridge, operating on the same route. Here's the terminal for passengers travelling by foot. The Inter-Islander Ferry Service is an official extension of State Highway 1 and the Main Trunk Railway Line. Luggage must be checked in. You can check in up to two bags weighing a maximum of 23 kilograms each. You'll be given a boarding pass and a luggage ID tag. There's a cafe in case you're feeling peckish. The same company which runs this ferry also runs New Zealand's long distance passenger trains. A few minutes after checking in, it's time to board. Please have your boarding pass available to be collected by the receptive and the gateway entrance. On behalf of Mr. Oliver, we do thank you for showing the pass today. Thank you for staying in the place of our journey. While we board, let's take a look at today's route. The ferry crossing is 93 kilometres, or 58 miles. The first third will involve navigating the Cook Strait with the remainder of the journey travelling through the fjord-like channels and inlets of the Marlborough Sounds. You can get a sense of the scale of the ferry here. The Kayarahi has nine decks and can carry a combination of up to 525 cars, 108 trailers or 65 trucks. The Kayarahi was built in Spain in 1998 and began service in Turkey. She's had a range of names and been used on a number of routes in Europe. In 2013, Inter-Islander chartered her for use across the Cook Strait. Since then, Kiwi Rail has bought her and she's been refitted to better suit the route. Welcome aboard. Let's take a quick look around. <laughs> There's a bistro called the Ocean View Eatery. There's a bar. And an indoor viewing lounge overlooking the bow. But I'd say the best views are from the open air viewing deck. The doors require some force. Down here there's a smoking area. More than 20 metres deep over most of its extent, this is considered one of the world's finest natural harbours. I decide to have lunch before we set sail. I don't want to miss out on food like I did on the Northern Explorer train. There's a range of snacks and hot foods on offer. 
According to media reports, the most popular dish on the Inter-Islander is curry chicken. There's also a breakfast menu for earlier sailings. There are sandwiches, sushi, fruit and cake. I order the special of the day, beef and mushroom pie. Kiwis know how to make a mean pie. The ferry has free Wi-Fi with a 500 megabyte limit. The sun is out, it's not windy, so it seems like a good day to sail across the Cook Strait. There are 350 passengers on board today. You know we're about to leave when the engines roar to life. Trucks are secured to the deck with chains. We reverse out of the dock. The Ara Tere can accommodate railway wagons. Even though I'm more of a train nerd than a ferry person, the size and power of this vessel is impressive. We swing around so the bow faces the correct direction. The movement sets off car alarms. There's a Metlink suburban train bound for Wellington. We'll navigate around the Miramar Peninsula en route to the Cook Strait. The Cook Strait has a wind funnelling effect, which often leads to strong winds in and around Wellington. Wellington is the southernmost capital city in the world. Wellington International Airport is located on this low-lying land between Wellington proper and the Miramar Peninsula. I spoke too soon about the weather, it's a bit drizzly. Here's the Wellington suburb of Seatoon. We're now approaching Barrett Reef, the scene of New Zealand's worst modern maritime disaster. In April 1968, the ferry, the Wahini, was operating an overnight crossing from Littleton Harbour near Christchurch to Wellington. She was caught in a fierce storm while entering Wellington Harbour. She ran onto Barrett Reef after losing control of her engines. She drifted along the reef, which gouged a large hole in her hull. Attempts to use a tug to bring her in tow failed, but by early afternoon the effect of the tide and storm caused her to suddenly list, and the call was made to abandon ship. The storm which has been battering Wellington City since early this morning may be the severest ever recorded in the area. Wellington Airport is closed and many of the capital's roads are blocked by flood water. Now half past one and the Wahini has swung round broadside to the wind. It's got a list of about 30 degrees which appears to increase as time passes. The Wahini is rolling frightfully in the heavy swell in the harbour. Many passengers and crew ended up in the sea while trying to board one of the remaining lifeboats. The Wahini sunk in 12 metres of water. Crafts of every description are heading out and have been heading out for the past quarter hour uh, from Worsa Bay. There have been surf life-saving boats from the surf club along here, dinghies, launches, motorboats. Uh, a whole truckload of inflatable life rafts came through 10 minutes ago. We don't know of any loss of life as of this moment. Some of the life rafts capsized in waves up to 6 metres high. It appears to be settling on the bottom. It's right over from where we're standing, about a mile off the pinnacle, as I believe they call the rocks jutting out here at Worcester Bay, very starkly, jet black rocks. 
and then by the time we got to the bottom of the hill, no more than two minutes had passed, the Wahini had lifted suddenly to one side. Of the 734 people on board, 53 people died from drowning, exposure to the elements or from injuries sustained in the evacuation. The disaster led to improved safety procedures and the creation of the Wellington Volunteer Coast Guard. Weather forecasting has also significantly improved and passenger sailings are now cancelled if waves are predicted to reach 5 metres or more. Wellington is barely visible through the mist. As we clear the harbour, we can just make out the South Island in the distance. It's pretty blustery, so let's look at the inside decks. The vehicle decks are closed while at sea. I'm currently on deck 8. Inter-Islander ferries feature a premium lounge. This is like a business class lounge with all food and drink included. A few weeks before this trip I received an email advising that the premium lounge would not be available because of crew shortages. At the time of recording, the premium lounge costs an extra 80 New Zealand dollars. The viewing lounge in the bow is very popular with almost all seats taken. Down on deck 7, here's the bar. The bar sells hot and cold drinks including wine and beer. Another look at the eatery. It's good to see recycling bins. But unless the weather is bad, I'd prefer to spend my time on the viewing deck. And so it's now time to say goodbye to the North Island. The Cook Strait is a dramatic and rugged channel where two seas meet. The strait is 22 kilometres wide at its narrowest point. It's frequently subject to strong winds with an average of 22 gales per year. Local riptides are also notorious for both their strength and unpredictability. The strong tides are influenced by the fact that high water on the western or Tasman side of the strait occurs about five hours later than high tide on the eastern or Pacific side. Another peculiarity of the route is that when you disembark in Picton, you're not really any further south than where you started in Wellington. We can now see an island at the northeast tip of the South Island. Our ferry is bound for Tory Channel, named after a migrant ship which passed through the channel in 1840. The channel has a narrow entrance between two heads. Tidal streams of up to seven knots flow through the entrance, which can cause dangerous turbulence. The sharp angular edges on these sea stacks are a dramatic welcome to the Tory Channel.
here's one of our sister ferries, the Kaitaki, bound for Wellington. The Kaitaki is the largest vessel in the Inter-Islander fleet and features private cabins with ensuite bathrooms for an extra cost. Kiwi Rail is replacing its ferry fleet with two new, larger, rail-enabled ferries, which will enter service from mid-2025. The new hybrid electric ferries will substantially increase passenger and freight capacity while reducing carbon emissions by about 40%. The Tory Channel is a drowned valley and part of the Marlborough Sounds. The channel is almost 17 kilometres long and up to 65 metres deep. This is one of the most remote and beautiful regions in New Zealand, bringing lots of people to the viewing deck to take it in. Most of these homes can only be reached by boat. This bay features a salmon farm. It's a very pleasant 21 degrees here in the shelter of the Sounds. A school operated here in the 1920s. We make a sharp starboard turn as we prepare to enter Queen Charlotte Sound. The curiously circuitous route between Wellington and Picton was the result of New Zealand Railways completing construction of the main north line from Christchurch to Picton, the route on which the Coastal Pacific train runs today. Until then, inter-island ferries predominantly travelled directly from Wellington to Christchurch. But with the demise of the Union Steam Shipping Company in the early 1960s, New Zealand Railways started the Inter-Islander in 1962. We're now in Queen Charlotte Sound, which will take us all the way to Picton. Yeah. 
You might wonder what's the difference between a sound and a fjord. A fjord is carved by a glacier, while a sound is formed by the flooding of a river valley. Did you know that New Zealand's most famous sound, Milford Sound, isn't a sound at all, it's a fjord. One of the world's great hiking and biking trails can be found on the Western Bank, the Queen Charlotte Track. To walk the track, you'll need to catch a water taxi from Picton. This bay is connected by road to Picton and has one of the largest marinas in New Zealand. There's a scenic viewpoint here, which is on a track about a two hour hike from Picton. Shortly, we'll make a gentle turn to port as we enter Picton Harbour. If you look closely, you'll see there's already a ferry and dock. Another view of Queen Charlotte Sound. The Marlborough Sounds was a base for whaling throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries. The fishing and tourism town of Picton comes into full view. Mabel Island marks the outer part of Picton Harbour. The Valentine is Inter-Islanders cargo only ship, able to carry trucks and rail freight. Our ferry has to turn around, as vehicle loading on the Kayarahi in Picton is from the stern. So how much is the fare? At the time of recording, fares for a one-way trip as a foot passenger start at 60 New Zealand dollars. You can pay a bit extra for flexible or refundable fares. Obviously travelling with a vehicle costs a lot more and the price depends on the size of your vehicle. You'll also pay extra to bring a bicycle or surfboard and can add premium lounge access. you have to admit it's incredibly picturesque. Passengers who drove are asked to return to their vehicles. You might wonder how the cars and trucks will exit given they're facing the wrong way. Vehicles turn around in the bow and there are internal ramps taking them down to the deck below this one which has the exit. Foot passengers are now invited to alight. Here you can see vehicles driving off from the lower deck.
luggage arrives on a carousel similar to at an airport. Here I am on the South Island. It was a really comfortable and enjoyable trip with loads of great scenery, beautiful. I uh, definitely recommend taking the ferry between the North and South Island. It's now a few hours later and here's the following ferry service arriving from Wellington, the Aratere. As the Kayarahi departs, there are up to six return into Islander services per day. Be sure to book your preferred ferry in advance as they can and do sell out. In my next video, we'll continue our journey south from Picton on the Coastal Pacific train to Christchurch. I think it might be my favourite train journey of all those I've done in New Zealand. Be sure to subscribe to find out why. Hope to see you then.